Okay, now I will turn it over to the moderator, Mr. Jerry Shiles, and they can get into the first case study with the panel. Thank you all. <coughs> the case studies that we pulled out of here are ones that we've seen in the office. Uh, a lot of people come to us that weren't clients of ours initially, and they come to us because problems have arisen. And we know that none of you are going to find yourself in this situation, but your friends might, acquaintances might, and children might. So their first question of the day is, or story of the day is, a husband contacted our firm needing help to make decisions for his wife of 60 years who suffered from Alzheimer's disease. He had a 15-year-old self-prepared advanced directive in POA, which the physician and hospital refused to honor due to questions regarding its validity. What could he do and how could this have been avoided? Well, this was a particularly bad situation. He came to us and uh, this, this gentleman had basically prepared his own advanced directive or uh, health care power of attorney, if you will, which, is, which the physician, as, as Jerry stated, refused to honor, just said, I don't think this is valid. Uh, and as you guys know, if, if you're in a situation where you need someone to make your decisions on your behalf and you do not have a valid power of attorney, your only other recourse is a guardianship proceeding at the courthouse, which is obviously has its own problems. In this particular situation, he didn't have a valid power of attorney or advanced directive for health care, and actually the, the treating physician for his wife refused to sign off stating that she was in fact incapacitated or incompetent, which would have made getting a guardianship at the courthouse very, very challenging. So it was sort of proverbial between a rock and a hard place. Uh, the lesson in this case, obviously, is to maintain your durable powers of attorney, administrative for health care. We've seen there's a growing trend nationally. We've started to see it here in Oklahoma as well, where when those documents get five years old, in some cases 10 years old, there's a number of institutions that just refuse to honor them. They say, we don't think it's valid, or we have an internal policy where if it's over five years old, we're not gonna, we're not gonna acknowledge it. So that's something we tell our clients, when they start getting five years old or more, it's a good, ch good time to look at those. Uh, and if you do come in or need to come in, that's a good time to get those updated. Yeah, keep in mind, that's, that's not our rule. That's maybe a bank's rule or an insurance company or whatever, and then we don't know that until it happens. So uh, we dealt with a couple of insurance company, a couple of banks, and once they say they're not going to accept it, they're not going to accept it. So it's important to come in, you know, every three to five years we'll look at all those documents and make sure they're current so we don't have those issues ever happen to you all. Good point. Okay, uh, story number two. A wife of 50 years passed away, leaving her husband as sole beneficiary of their trust. He remarried not long thereafter, and by the time he died, less than two years later, his new wife had transferred all of his assets, including the trust, into her name. She even convinced him to liquidate his substantial IRA and give the money to her. How could this have been avoided? Well, again, very bad situation. Uh, gentleman passed away. His children come to us and say, you know, my, my, my parents were pretty well off, and my uh, father got remarried. We don't know too much about this lady. Uh, only when they start digging around, they find out everything's gone for the most part. Uh, raises several issues. Number one is communication. Uh, it's important to let your children know kind of what's going on sometimes. Not every situation, but oftentimes. Uh, let, so, let other people know so they can kind of help you keep things going. Uh, they can help monitor the situation and, on your behalf. Uh, we also address this issue in a few ways. Number one is, as some of you may have, we have remarriage protection that we incorporate into a lot of our trust, uh, in which, which tries to avoid this exact situation. So if one spouse passes away, the surviving spouse, uh, if they were to get remarried, particularly without a prenuptial agreement, that the children can step in and help manage the trust, try to avoid this type of situation. Uh, we also have a disability panel provision, which, if, it, which, which, in, in which case you can nominate who gets to make the decision as to when it's time to change trustees. Oftentimes, that's your spouse, maybe your children. So, if if the children and uh, other members that you designate to start thinking that maybe now's a good time to have a change in trustee regardless of surrounding issues, 
they can go ahead and, and make that change. They have the authorization. Again, trying to avoid someone coming in that might exercise undue influence or coercion uh, to make that change. We had, uh, we had one similar situation where dad did the right thing in that he informed the kids of what he had done. And the kids felt like he was incompetent, so we went to court, and a judge ruled that he was not competent, that the actions he'd taken were inappropriate, and they imposed a constructive trust over those assets so that the second wife could not deplete them. So if we know far enough in advance, we can take some corrective action. In this case, to add to the misery, his children did not learn of any of this until after his death, and we're shocked to discover that not only was the estate mostly wiped out, but a substantial tax liability was owed to the IRS due to the IRA distributions. What now? Well, when the trust administration signed, when somebody dies and there's some family dynamics going on, I try to work as quickly as I can and try to keep the peace within the family. That's not anything legal. That's just common sense. I just don't want people to fight and argue, so I try to work as quickly as I can if we have those issues. Um, another issue may be, or advantage may be, that um, to the family, this new wife may be liable for any, you know, IRS tax liabilities. I mean, you never know. And uh, final thought would probably be just don't remarry. <laughs> <laughs> That'll solve it all.